gonna be the day that they're going from a back to you? By now, you should be some high for the life, what it gotta do? I don't believe in anybody feels the way I do about you now. Hey, man. What's up with this lighting, man? Okay. There we go. All right, everyone, welcome to Sunday with Ola 100. Let's go. It's Sunday with Ola 100, baby! Holy shit! Finally! <sighs> I'm exhausted! <laughs> Holy shit! You know, in before making this video, I was planning a lot, man. I was like, you know, putting on the whiteboard out there, you know, writing up all that I needed to do to make Sunday with Ola 100 uh, special. You know, we were writing up like, okay, you, you, I do this segment with this, and I thank people, and blah blah blah, and you know, this and this and this, like a full whiteboard. I see if I can find a picture. As we were sitting writing shit up on the whiteboard, the more I realized that I'm just gonna make it another Swola, just as all the other Swolas out there, man. That... HA! No need to make anything special. Let's save that for 1 million subscribers. Awesome! I just realized I need to do whatever I'm doing every other week. Like, you know, regurgitating the news and, and swear, cuss, and sit here on my ass. So, that's what I'm gonna do today, baby. However, we do have an extra little couple of segments for you that are gonna be special for this episode. I'm gonna check out, uh, together with you guys, check out my first live show ever found on an old camera. Stuff like that. Also, I'm guesting Frog Leap Studios when he was in Stockholm and I'm playing some Pantera with him live. It was amazing, so that's what to expect in today's Sunday with Ola 100, baby! Holy shit! Also, I was getting shit in the last Swola for putting a Coke can way too close to the camera and someone's like, oh, 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 Ola, oh, why are you repping Coca-Cola? Can't I just have a fucking drink nowadays, man? So, I decided for this Swola, I'm gonna pour it all up in a glass and make this little guy happy. Oh, he's gonna be so happy with this. Look, no branding. It's in a f***ing glass now, okay? I'm still gonna put this f***ing can right there. Not sponsored, I just like Coke Zero right now, is that okay? No? Oh, you can't drink Coke Zero! <laughs> you guys. No, <laughs> skip that. Okay, the reoccurring theme for the past Swolas you might have noticed has been Pantera. And last week, Pantera finally announced their first shows for 2022. They're announcing two festivals with Knotfest. Look at this! That's a tour poster right there. It says Pantera on it. I'm gonna be completely honest. When I saw this poster the first time, I actually shed a tear, man. As I'm watching this right now, I'm getting goosebumps. Just to see Pantera on a, you know, a gig poster for a gig that's coming up. It's a show that's gonna happen. And together with, you know, uh, Slipknot, Judas Priest, Bring Me the Horizon, Venom, Trivium, 
Sepultura, hypocrisy, etc. It feels so weird seeing the name Pantera on there, man. People are gonna complain about them using the name Pantera. I don't really give a shit right now. I'm just really excited to see the name there, man. Holy shit. This is a good day for Pantera fans. Tenemos Explosivos. That's a fucking brilliant band name, by the way. Tenemos Explosivos. We have explosives. <laughs> that's a great... That's just such a... That's a genius band name, by the way. Also, in other words, Grady Champion made a post claiming that he was asked to help out with this upcoming Pantera reunion tribute thing. Uh, in the way that he's not going to be Zach Wilde's guitar tech, because Zach Wilde has a guitar tech, but he's going to be a part of it, making sure that Zach will be getting Dimebag's tone using Dimebag gear. Okay, let's read on. Rita Haney has allowed me to access some of Dime's gear, and I'm bringing it for Zach. The details of the rig and stuff are still to be worked out yet. I start with Pantera and I will end with Pantera. I didn't know the right thing to think, to say, to do. When I saw the headline, like everyone else, I threw up. Sweaty palms, heart was freaking out. I had seen that headline thousand times in my nightmares. Okay, so he's giving away here that he wasn't initially interested in a reunion. After it sunk in and I spoke to everyone, I felt like I would be crazy to turn my nose up and say, F that. I needed to be involved if I am needed. Turns out I am needed and I'm gonna fing do it. Holy shit, Grady, what a fing legend. If you wanna hate, don't go. I don't want you to hear it. If you want a Pantera experience, this is it. We're giving it hell and going to give it all there is to give. Philip, Rex Brown, Sack, and Char Benante are going to bring it stronger than all. There you have it. Grady just made things. A lot more exciting in my opinion. And, you know, I agree with his words. Now the question is, will they bring Dimebag's guitar back on stage? Will they bring, you know, the... Pixie? Pixie? Okay. Hey, Bobby. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about... Uh, we're talking about Pantera. We're currently talking about Pantera and what stuff will be brought from Grady and Rita to the new Pantera reunion. And uh, we're currently discussing that. So, I don't know, do you have anything to, to say about this? Or just want to play? Just want to play around? <laughs> yeah, dear bro. My dog is also genuinely excited about the Pantera thing. Hello? So the question will be, will they bring some Washburn Dime guitars, some Dean Dime guitars, or will they play using Dime guitars? I don't think we'll see anything before the first show, but I think they'll probably do something uh, that will happen next year with Dime guitars. I'm hoping so, at least. Or will Zach Wilde use his own guitars? You know, he's an incredible guitar player and the name on its own, but seeing the, uh, the, the how everything is shaping up, I think he'll probably play some Dime guitars or something like that. Uh, we just have to see, man. I'm really excited about this. Can you see and tell? Even Pix, look. Pix. Who excited are you? You remember asshole Ola in the beginning of this video was playing some Oasis? Well, there's some rumors going around that Noel Gallagher of Oasis is getting a new signature guitar exclusive. <sighs> How I do not care at this point. Let's just close this tab right there. However, Trogli of Trogli's Guitar Show, he's always on the money in regards to the Gibson rumors. And two weeks ago, he made a video talking about a potential Mark Morton of Lamb of God signature guitar. You know, Mark has been teasing it quite a bit on his Twitter account where he puts up the, you know, the Les Paul logo and all that. It seems that we, we, we might see something from Gibson. Just as in the past fall, well, we've been talking about how Gibson have kind of ramped up their game and trying to, you know, uh, get back the artists to uh, the brand, it seems that they might lash out to a big guitar player like Mark Morton because obviously he's in a very significant band nowadays. You know, Charlie, he's 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 on the money with a lot of things and you know, he, he he understands this. He understands how Gibson works and what they're doing and what that gay can guy is doing on Instagram. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a Mark Morton signature guitar that they're teasing. Uh, will it be a Les Paul? Will it be a Thunderbird? What, what will it be? What will it be? We have no idea. 
We'll just have to see. If we want to check out Trogly, go click here. He has an excellent channel where he checks out a lot of Gibson guitars. All right, since this is the Swola news, we have to talk a little bit about Megadeth. And I saw this story in regards to Damon Stain opens up about the moment he knew Marty Friedman would leave Megadeth. I personally didn't know the details, but they're in this article and it's quite grim. It all comes down to a solo on the album Risk, which is, it's a weird Megadeth album, man. But the album does have a bunch of really cool songs on it that are very hit friendly, I would say. Maybe not necessarily what the Megadeth fan wanted, but they have a couple of good songs on there. Anyways, it was in regards to a solo for the song Breadline, and uh, Damon Stain is saying this, I always believe we should give the guitar player an opportunity to do a solo that he, uh, he feels is right for the song, said Mustaine. If someone plays something that doesn't work for the part, then I may make some suggestions. If it's still not happening, I might say, okay, this is what I want you to play here. If a lead totally doesn't work, then I'm gonna do the part myself. So he's talking about him exchanging the solo with, uh, with Marty Freeman in this case. That's what happened on Breadline. And Marty Freeman quit over the solo on Breadline. As Mustaine explained, management was already prepping Breadline to be a single and needed a more single-friendly solo. I said to management, well, you have three choices. Either you mute the solo completely, have Marty come back and redo it, or I do it. And then I said, if I do it, you better tell him. Well, I redid it and nobody told Marty. So we're in there listening to the finished album and the solo comes on. It's my solo, not Marty's. I looked at him as tears ran down his face and I knew right away that nobody had told him. I knew that was probably going to be the end of Marty Freeman. Holy shit, man, that, that hurts just reading that. What happened to Marty was definitely not okay. Our management was supposed to tell him and for whatever reason, they didn't do it. I think that was a terrible thing to do to him. But at the same time, I mean, he's blaming the management, but maybe this could be something that they might have talked, you know, from one guitar player to the other. Uh, just be open about it. it. sounds a little weird that, you know, having someone else say that. <laughs> I don't know, man. This happened a long time ago and, dude, my heart goes out to Marty Freeman, man. That's not a nice way of, <laughs> you know, letting someone know they exchanged your solo. Okay, and since we haven't talked about Metallica in today's Swallow, because, you know, in these recent Swallows, you have to talk about Pantera, Megadeth, Metallica. Okay, those are the big threes, in my opinion. Uh, we have to talk about the potential rumor that James McHatfield is dating Kim Kardashian. I mean, she is wearing a Metallica t-shirt right here. No, but in recent news, James Hatfield is now single. He filed for divorce with his wife and Kim Kardashian is also single. And this article is suggesting that they are now dating. Does anyone care? Like, really? Who cares if he's dating Kim Kardashian, really? They, well, I guess I care because I brought it up on the news. No, this is actually satire. It's not real news. They're just speculating and, uh, well, it's satire, so it's just made up. It's, it's, it's fake news. And it, it says so on the website. You know, when it's on the swollen news, huh? It might be real. Just saying. My friends, that was the news. Thank you. Ska vi göra en på eller? Ja, jag filmar nu. Är det? Okej. Okay. Tja. All right, so uh, <laughs> me and Joel are, are uh, gonna pick up uh, a guest today. Frogly, Leo is in town. I talked to Leo and we're gonna go picking up and uh, we, uh, we're, we're bringing him to the office. He wanted to check out the office, so I'm extremely excited about that. Maybe have some lunch, have a good time. And maybe when he's having the gig tonight, Maybe there'll be a certain special guest on one of the songs. <gasps> oh! I, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna go up and play a song or two. We, we'll just have to see, but maybe secret. Oh! No, no. Ola, if you want to like join in on a song, because we're playing a gig tonight. So maybe he will. Let's find out. 
Hey, we got some t-shirts. Yo. What? One for you. <laughs> Whoa. I asked Ola if uh, I could get a shirt and uh, they actually printed it on demand. Yeah. They have a very cool uh, merchandise set up here. <laughs> <laughs> and a dog. <laughs> I'm uh, pretending to know what I'm doing. Where are they? Sladden är ganska... <laughs> det blick... Ja, det blixar lite. Jag tror fan den här är helt pack. Mm. All right, I'm standing here with my cables, ready to go. Uh, we didn't sound check, but uh, it's just a song, man. So we're currently waiting to get let in, so we can go in and... Uh, I, I need to pee, like really bad. Ready? See you out there, man. See you soon. Kick ass. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey. Oh, my. for the first time on the Front Day Show. He's a guitarist. He's a YouTuber. He's an influencer. His name is Ola Englund. And there you have it, that's me joining Frog Leap for a song. Holy shit, they were amazing live. I'm extremely thankful that they invited me to play Pantera uh, with them. It, 
that means a lot to me. And uh, you guys also might have seen that I was not playing a regular solar guitar. And uh, some of you might have guessed, yes, it is the later the Type X. That, uh, you know, we've been working on that for a couple of years. And I, I showed the backside of one uh, about a year ago. And uh, we're still working on it. So you have to wait a little bit in regards of uh, an announcement of that guitar. But I felt that I wanted to play uh, that guitar for that live show right there. So that's all I'm going to say for now. You just have to wait a little bit. But thank you so much for the patience and thank you so much for the kind words. Question of the day. I figured I would do uh, three quicker questions today. So let's just go straight into it. Chris Horn is asking, Hey Ola, what are your top three video games from the last 10 years? Cheers. Great question. My problem is my memory. I don't remember what games are good or not, but I think I have a pretty good... Uh, I don't have a pretty good... I think I can give you an answer and the answer... I, it has to be a Souls game, man. I mean, the best games of these past 10 years are the, the Souls games. You know, Dark Souls and uh, Demon Souls and, and Bloodborne and Sekiro and Elden Ring, man. Elden Ring? Holy shit. That's the, the most recent game I devoted at least like 200 hours in. I would probably say that I enjoyed Bloodborne the most out of these so far. I mean, all of them are friggin' amazing if you compare to other games, but just any Soulsborne game, uh, definitely on the top of my list of games uh, for the past 10 years. Also, I would probably put Hollow Knight on there as well, uh, which is a great platform. I played it for Switch, but it's also available for PC. Uh, I started playing it on PC as well just recently, in, uh, in before they're, they're gonna release a new Silk Song that's gonna come out uh, at a later point this year, I hope. Very excited for that. Hollow Knight, incredible. And the third game, maybe Witcher 3, maybe? You know, it's been a long time since I played it now, but I remember when I started playing Witcher, I, I was just so impressed. I didn't buy it at launch. I got it a couple of years after when they released both the DLCs, you know, uh, the, uh, the winery thing and the, the, the whatever the other thing it was. I don't remember what, what the names are, I'm sorry. Anyways, I bought it then, so if there were any like bugs and shit, they were mostly like uh, figured out at that time as I started playing. And I just thought it was a really fucking flawless game uh, overall. And coming from playing and liking, you know, a lot of the Elder Scrolls stuff and like Skyrim and uh, Fallout and all those Bethesda games, you know, playing Witcher was like, holy shit. This is how you're supposed to make an RPG, man. It's fucking flawless. Bethesda games are filled with with flaws. It's just like, oh, you you run around and uh, in Skyrim and there's a dragon like just stuck in the ground. It's just so stupid. And I felt that with Witcher's like, man, it's such a good, well-designed game. So there you go. Olmors. Hey, Ola, have you watched a documentary about Swedish metal on Swedish TV? You are in it. Yes, I have. Uh, there is an excellent Swedish documentary on Swedish Mel. I think it's four episodes. And I, I feel very honored to be, even though it's not that much, I'm in there both uh, as a picture from one of my YouTube videos. So I'm in the show. It's not much, but at least it's something. Also, there's a guitar player in the first episode that is using a Washburn Solar guitar, which I thought was really cool. So uh, I, I'm in it somehow, but they're not really talking about me and my bands. I'm just in there in a cameo, basically. But still cool, man. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. And it's a great documentary if... Uh, I don't think it's if there's a translated version, but maybe there will be because it's excellent. It's about Swedish uh, death metal bands and, and cool shit. From Crushed or John. Fuck. Hey, Ola. Successful musician. Stop it. Musical influencer. Stop it. Solo guitar owner, that's true. And a fan of fans, very true. What is something you can share as the next big goal? I'm not much for sharing the future because, you know, I like surprises. And uh, I, I uh, you know, I have a lot of surprises in my sleep. I can't look at this camera, it's off. Stop looking at this camera, Ola. But I do have a lot of news that I that, that, that is coming, but I don't want to spoil anything yet. But I think one of my, in terms of YouTube goals, is probably to get to 1 million subscribers. Is it an important goal for me? No, not necessarily. More than just showing that my channel might still be growing. And if my channel is growing, I might be doing something right. That's what I hope, at least. So, 
that would probably be my next goal, at least for the YouTube thing, uh, to reach 1 million subscribers. How will I get there? I hope with continuity and just slow paced. Is it going to take one year? Is it going to take five years? Who cares? Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get there. Okay? Thank you so much for that question. Thank you so much. Yes. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the boss office. <sighs> Two weeks ago, I showed you a slight bit of my past through old video recordings, but I saved some of them for today because I figured we would watch my first ever live show and basically just watch the progress until, you know, where I am today, basically, because it's it's been a long ride, man. I thought it might be interesting because we all start somewhere, right? So I'm going to share you where I started when I was a young little Ola England. <laughs> okay, so my first ever real band was called Leif Sneeglish. Leif is a name. Sneeglish is basically a slug. So Leif the slug. And I'm not exactly sure when this was, but it looks like it was on uh, Lucia one year, maybe 96. Look at that, that's Ola England. Playing the trumpet, man. This band was formed when I met this drummer that's right there, Yuan, and uh, he was playing punk. So we started, I started listening to punk with him, and we basically made like a punk cover band. This is 1996, I guess we're like 15 years old or something. And uh, that's Anders, the bass player, right there, playing a bass. And I'm playing my Fender Mustang. That's a, such a stratty sound, man. Here we go. Look at that face, man. That looks so much like my son. Solo. Sounds just like today, man. Me and the drummer Joe started listening a lot more to metal and death metal uh, while we were still in this punk band. So we decided to make and create a cover band, like a, a band playing covers, uh, metal covers. This is that band. It's called Subside. And uh, it's basically me, it's Antonio on vocals, Martin on bass, and Joe on drums. This is our first gig in 1998. Look at this. Seems like we got a little bit more uh, stage presence <laughs> later in life. This is 02, okay. That's, uh, that's a grimy lead tone right there, man. Yes! This is a fucking bold for her, man. And the thing about Subside is that that's the band where... I mean, we were very, very tight together and we, we did like almost, we were a band for 10 years and we were really f grinding the Stockholm scene. I mean, back at this time when we were swinging demos left and right, we, you know, the biggest dream to, was to get a record deal. And we finally got that around 2006 and uh, we released an album that's, I think it's out there somewhere. The grinding alone became the demise of the band because we, we just felt that nothing really happened and that's obviously very common for a lot of bands. You just grind and grind and you feel like nothing's happening. I think the band in general was just a little bit fed up with each other at this time and uh, we had that record company and that record deal that didn't really fall through uh, that well and we were just a little sick and tired of ourselves so everyone kind of went their own ways a little bit. I started Fear with Mario uh, just to go back to basics a little bit just you know sit at home and write music. Antonio uh, went and started uh, several different bands one called Barbas which uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can get a link. It's incredibly awesome. Uh, Joe and the drummer is playing in a band called Grande today, which is very much active and playing. We had an incredible drive and also, you know, we had the success and the failure. I think that's a very important step for any band to feel both failure and success and being through success and failure together, you know, as a unit. It's also very important for me today and it's something I really appreciate because it's, it's, it's the, those are my roots, man. That's where I come from. Sometimes it's just really easy for get all of that i'm definitely older <laughs> and i'm sitting here doing you know my youtube shit and all that but you know the the, the metal lives strong within me man and i can go back and look at these these shows where i'm playing you know i look like a moron right here with my pants and 
a Washburn Dying 33 and a Fender concert at. But, you know, I'm incredibly proud about this era because it's, you know, it's me growing up, man. I wouldn't be what I'm today without this. So there you go. I just want to show you a little bit more of my past. I think it will be suiting for the Swola 100. Hope you enjoyed the show so far, man. Let's head back to the old line of show. Let's rough. All right. That was just a snippet of me checking out uh, some of my performances from uh, my past bands. But there was uh, a lot more material to look at. So that video, I kind of shortened it down for a Swola format. But it is a 15 minute video that you're going to be able to watch on my second channel if you want to watch it all, where I'm also covering like Feared and a little bit of Six Feet Under and The Haunted and a little bit more of Subside as well. If you want to check out that full video, go subscribe to my second channel, Old England number two, and that video will be up in the coming days. Okay? Thank you. And that, my friends, was Sunday with Ola 100 for you. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And I have to give my real heartfelt uh, thank yous to you guys. Because you guys are making this incredibly easy for me. I enjoy my job as doing this. I hope you can see that. I really enjoy what I'm doing. And it's because of you guys giving back. You know, it could be by, you know, commenting, writing nice things and just uh, generally showing that you enjoy my shit. And it definitely helps. It definitely pushes me to do better. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much. You guys are fucking amazing. And also to everyone that's watching the premiere. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you. You guys can rule. If you want to support what we're doing right here, you can buy merch from our merch shop, uh, buy an album, sign vinyl or whatever. I, I would really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much. Here's to another 100 episodes of Sunday with Ola. Mwah! Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Go get it, son. Go get it, son. Go get it, son.